Good afternoon. I'm Ian Wardropper, director of the Frick. I'm delighted to welcome you all here. Somebody was saying as we were walking in that if a meteor was about to strike this room, it would uh, obliterate much of sculpture studies in the world. Um, I'm a little reluctant to make that comment today, but um, it is true that, that uh, many of the speakers here are among the most preeminent uh, in their fields, and I'm delighted to have an audience of, of people who are also passionately interested about sculpture. Over, ten year, over the 10 years that the Center for the History of Collecting has been in operation, there's never been a symposium devoted to sculpture. I started discussing the possibility of addressing this topic with Inga Ries several years ago and began pulling together ideas for it last summer, but I quickly realized that we needed someone totally immersed in and up to date in the field of sculpture studies. I thought immediately of Malcolm Baker, and fortuitously, he was going to begin a brief residence as a scholar at the Bard Graduates Center last September. We invited him to lunch, and in short order, he thought of a conceptual framework and assembled uh, a list of prospective speakers, most of whom, I'm glad to say, were able to join this program. We're all grateful to Malcolm for taking on this role, as well as for agreeing to be the, agreeing to be the keynote speaker. Personally, I take great satisfaction in seeing this symposium happen. Um, I began as an assistant curator in the Department of European Painting and Sculpture at the Art Institute of Chicago in 1982. Um, I think I met Malcolm around that time. Um, I think he was still at the V&A then. Um, and struggled to integrate works on pedestals with works hanging on the walls in renovated galleries in the 1980s and later as the head of a department of decorative arts and sculpture and ancient art uh, to find its place in new galleries of decorative arts. Those of us working in American and European museums have often had to reflect on acquiring and displaying sculpture in these contexts as well as the larger question of the history of collecting it. There have been conferences looking at the subject, notably one um, held by CASVA at the National Gallery of Art in Washington I participated in in 2003, but there have been few occasions for an overview of the subject, so I'm grateful to all of today's participants for giving us the benefit of their thinking and experience. My thanks to Inga Riest, Esme Quadbach, and Samantha Deutsch of the Center for the History of Collecting for their usual uh, impeccable logistical arrangements, uh, and to the Robert H. Smith Family Foundation, uh, appropriately as Robert Smith was a great collector of sculpture himself, for funding this symposium. Inga. Ian, let me add my warm welcome to all of you and also my thanks to the Smith Family Foundation for its generous support of this symposium. Uh, it is actually one that complements two others that the center has organized in past years on collecting Italian Renaissance paintings and collecting Italian Baroque art, so it makes a very nice trio. Um, I would also, as always, like to extend great thanks to Stephen Berry, the uh, Andrew W. Mellon Chief Librarian uh, at the Frick Art Reference Library, which houses the center, uh, who so stalwartly supports this and all of the center's programs, uh, from its fellowships to the book prize that we offer. And I'd like to thank Samantha Deutsch and Esme Quadbach, too, without whom these events could never happen as they so effectively and efficiently ensure that the details of these two days are taken care of to make a memorable and thought-provoking occasion. Although 10 years of overseeing the programming of the center has vastly broadened our knowledge of collecting in many categories of art as we follow the projects of our fellows and read books for the, uh, the Biennial Book Prize, um, the uh, Collecting of sculpture is, as Ian noted, a topic that we have only landed on now. And that is in part, to be perfectly honest, uh, because we found it one of the most difficult to define. <laughs> so we always knew we wanted to address this uh, vast uh, landscape of uh, collecting sculpture, uh, but we, and a, a subject that has drawn kings and princes to it over the centuries and that resonates with artists uh, as well. But we, uh, and it's even been the foundation, part of the foundational mission of so many museums in the United States and Europe. But to shape the program uh, was something that we really felt was beyond our skill set. 
Uh, so initially, Ian gave us some helpful guidelines, as he said, and then offered the wonderful suggestion that was the key to our success, that we bring Malcolm Baker into the discussions. So after that lunch that Ian mentioned, uh, and for me, listening to Malcolm and Ian brainstorming in a constructive way, I felt confident that we could move forward to shape uh, a, a viable program. So between them, Malcolm and Ian know everyone in the field, uh, which made my job easy and resulted in the exceptionally distinguished international roster of speakers that we will hear from today and tomorrow as they address aspects of sculpture collecting and display that range from the Wunderkammern of the Renaissance to garden sculpture in France, Germany, and England to sculpture galleries and finally to the challenges of acquiring and situating sculpture in public museums. And lastly, we will have a great treat in store at the close of our proceedings tomorrow when Ian engages in conversation with writer, critic, and sculptor collector, uh, sculpture collector James Fenton.